Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Over a year after the death of Paul Allen, Strato Launch's future plans are finally coming into public focus. For a while, it was seeming that The Rock would become known as the 21st century of the Spruce Goose. Instead of launching rockets into space, The Rock will instead carry a small hypersonic rocket plane called the Talon A, which will be a commercial platform to perform hypersonic experiments. Which is something of an interesting transition. I mean, obviously there's been a lot of interest in, in uh, hypersonic weapons that manoeuvre inside the atmosphere. So it's conceivable that there might be a lot of research money coming out to companies who might want a plug-in-and-play environment where they can deploy their experiments on the leading edge, in the airstream, in various other places, and just fly their experiments, rather than having to build out an entire test bed. So the Talon is really small. It's less than 9 meters long and at launch will mass less than 3 tons fully fueled. The design has a delta wing and a single tail, but this isn't the first we've heard about a hypersonic test vehicle from Strato Launch. I've seen a paper talking about the Hyper A, which had a slightly different configuration. It had wingtip fins instead. And it was also going to use a rocket engine designed and built by Strato Launch called the PGA. That would be a hydrogen oxygen engine. However, interviews or articles suggest that they're now looking for outside providers for the rocket engine, which I think uh, Aerojet Rocketdyne with their RL10s might be a good bet since they've already been talking with Strato Launch. But equally, that might be too expensive and they might go with a, an engine from a smaller provider like Maston Space Systems, who are basically in the same neighborhood as Strato Launch. The paper in question also shows wind tunnel models of the Hyper A. And, and you know, so this sort of shows that there is some previous development they've been working on. This isn't something that they just threw together just before April 1st to try and convince investors. This is something that has had some substantive work and studies being done on it. So the way this would work is it would be carried out to a test launch site. Because this is going to travel at about Mach 6, they have to be a fairly long distance away. They would do this off the coast of California. It would start at 30,000 feet, uh, rise up to 90,000 feet, and at that point it would travel at about you know, Mach 6 or Mach 7 for a few minutes. And once it stopped, it would glide down from altitude and land back at Mojave. Alternatively, depending on the experiment, you could also do a ballistic path where it would tr fly up to as high as, you know, 477,000 feet in this case. Although this vehicle is, point is supposed to be going at Mach 10, so that may not be representative of what Talon A is capable of. But the Strato launch site also has the future iterations of the vehicle listed. The Talon A is the small one. They can actually put three of those on a single rock. The Talon Z is the next generation. They will only be able to fit one of these. In fact, uh, while the Talon Z obviously didn't exist in the original paper, there is a rendering showing a larger version of the Hyper A. So presumably these things are going to be roughly comparable in terms of airframe size. And yeah, you're going to only be able to put one of these on the rock at a time. And it looks as if they haven't completely abandoned their idea of launching stuff into orbit because they list black ice as a future vehicle. And you can tell how big this is by the fact that they have a cockpit at the front with windows. This is going to be about the same size as a space shuttle, presumably maybe about 100 tons mass. That would be consistent with what the, the rock is able to carry. So there's no official animations of how the Talon A would actually fly or perform, which gives me a perfect excuse, as if I needed one, to try and build a version in Kerbal Space Program. Getting the exact uh, proportions is kind of hard because the fuselage is way too fat compared to what Strato Launch actually uses. But you can get something that's roughly the right shape and size and gets to approximately the right altitude. Yeah, this is all stock and... Um, yeah, we'll put the cockpit on the right side, sorry, the left side as usual, because of course captains fly on the left. So the ROG would fly a long way from the launch site and turn around and then point the Hyper A at the target and then at the appropriate distance would pull into a climb, release the vehicle, which would then light its engines and start climbing towards altitude. 
in this design it's got four little rocket engines so it'll look a little more like the X-15 but uh, they sound like they're going to use a single rocket engine or perhaps a pair of rocket engines depending upon their provider. If we are to trust the Hyper A paper then it will get maybe 90 seconds to 100 seconds of full thrust. So initially it's going to head up into a climb and then start letting the thing level out. So it flies into essentially a ballistic arc and then just continues to uh, accelerate out through this. Now you see at this point we're only travelling just over Mach 1 here so we're going to have to get level so we can sustain the, the amount of speed that we actually need. Again, this is not really that accurate. If this was an accurate hypersonic test bed, then Strata Launch wouldn't have a market because their customers would be playing Kerbal Space Program, obviously. I mean, even with the today's supercomputers, you can perform computational fluid dynamics at these speeds, but it takes a lot of resources. And then you have esoteric effects where you have, for example, chemical changes going on when the, the air is hitting so hard that the oxygen atoms are our molecules are breaking into atoms and becoming more reactive. That changes a lot of your thermodynamics. So yeah, uh, it would basically fly into this and then uh, level out, accelerate up to its speed, and perhaps it would maintain speed for a while. And at some point, it would run out of fuel, and from there, it would become a glider. This one I got just right, because you can see the nose cone is about to explode, but it burns out just before there, and I feel like I did a pretty good job. Of course, computers would be flying this thing, I'm flying this myself because I'm not going to let computers have all the fun. So anyway, this new hypersonic business platform is an interesting concept. It's a big turnaround for uh, Strato Launch. They've had a heck of a time trying to get a launch vehicle. Back when Strato Launch was originally pinched after it was, it was like Vulcan Aviation, I believe, or Vulcan Aerospace. Um, they were going to fly with a rocket built by SpaceX. The Falcon 5 was sort of uh, a gentleman's agreement between Paul Allen and uh, Elon Musk. But at some point, it was it became clear that the Falcon 5 would have very little in common with the Falcon 9, and development was stopped. So that left them looking for another launch vehicle. The next place they looked was... Um, uh, Orbital ATK, who of course made the Pegasus, but the Pegasus as a launch vehicle is dying. It doesn't have any customers who want to use it anymore. The last mission that flew last year was delayed, and while there was one potential launch opportunity for it, one contract that was tailor-made for Pegasus, that was also won by SpaceX, who are going to have to make their Falcon 9 do something it wasn't really originally envisaged to do. At one point, Strato Launch was talking about being able to launch three Pegasus XL at once, which, yeah, it wasn't going to happen. No one was wanting to fly a single Pegasus XL, never mind three of them at the same time. In 2018, the Rock was already performing taxi tests to demonstrate that it was able to move under its own power and it was only a matter of time before it was going to fly. And they announced that they had a bunch of their own rocket concepts that Strato Launch was planning to develop. But then Paul Allen died and the new people behind Vulcan Ventures were no longer interested in financing it. You know, Paul Allen had a very specific idea. He wanted to invest in space, even although it was probably not a good investment for him. He just liked the idea, I think, personally being a, a nerd. But without him, Vulcan Ventures essentially stopped funding Strato Launch, and Strato Launch were left with the world's biggest aircraft, which they did prove would fly, but they didn't have anything that they could fly on it. So yeah, this is what has brought us today, and this has brought us to me flying this thing around. It actually works pretty well in the end, although I'm having a hard time landing it. But of course, I designed that in five minutes. They spent years designing Strato Launch. And, but the question remains, can they stick the metaphorical landing and bring a, a reason for, for the rock to exist? It would be great. I think it's a beautiful aircraft. I think it's an amazing work of technology. And it's a shame that we haven't got an application for it. So... Here's hoping we see hypersonic aircraft launch from this monster because that would be amazingly cool and in fact infinitely times cooler than the alternative which is this ends up parked at a museum. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.